phone switch. <laughs> Can you see me? Yeah, I see you. All right. What's going on, guys? So um, we're done with the whole inspection or whatever, but uh, and we kind of started already with the draining and, and process and all that of the of the radiator. But um, I lost I, my my battery was dead. Both of my batteries are dead, and this one's about to die actually. So I have the other one that's been charging, and I don't know. It's just a big mess. I thought I was gonna have it ready, so it's kind of dark. Um, so yeah, we went ahead and. Um, drain the radiator we, we flushed it out with the cleaner so uh, it's gonna you know clean up obviously everything that it is so you just put the cleaner in first like you drain the radiator you put the cleaner in you fill it up with water let it run for 10 minutes with the heater on high so it'll circulate throughout the whole system and that's how you get it clean uh, that's how you kind of like clean it up so um, so yeah we went ahead and did that and now what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go ahead what actually what I think we're gonna do is remove the radiator. Uh, we're not in the garage, but I wanna take the radiator out and then flush out anything that's in the engine before I change the thermostat and all that. Just because we don't wanna put in the car with contaminated stuff, you know what I mean? Like, why would you do that? Why would you change something but like not do it all the way? So we wanna do it all the way and make sure that it's done right the first time, um, which is a theme that I like to do a lot and that's what I've learned working where I'm at now and even before, so. We're going to go ahead and actually remove the radiator. Uh, then we're going to take out the overflow tank. We're going to wash out the overflow tank because it's contaminated with the old stuff. We're also going to take off the lines for the heater core and we're going to pressure wash out the heater core. We're going to also uh, take off the thermostat and clean up the thermostat uh, housing and, and everything that's in there because again we want to make sure that there's no no to little contaminants i know there's still going to be contaminants and what i should do is a super flush but i think if we pressure wash everything out fill it up with coolant and then um you know have the proper mixture uh it should work out perfectly fine so the good thing is coolant lasts for five years uh or i think it's a hundred thousand miles or fifty thousand miles is when you should change it is the intervals so the good thing is like we don't know the history on it so we're doing it now to prevent anything in the future and again we're going to do be going the extra mile to do all the extra stuff just so there's nothing um, that needs to get done so i think the first thing what i'm going to do is because this thing is in the way we're going to actually remove the air intake uh we're going to remove the intake system and uh then we'll go from there so uh, i didn't look anything up have you looked anything up on I how to look something no. up. yeah so <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like you guys are here with me watching me take this out um, so uh, we're gonna kind of like go in bits as far as like I don't want to take this I don't want to make this a 30 minute video of me just taking every single thing out when you can literally just google everything before before we do and figure it out before I do so I'm just gonna show you like the small steps that I'm gonna take like in short clips uh, before I actually like pull out the radiator and all that and uh, then I'll show you guys when I'm pressure washing the, the system. So, yeah. yeah. There you go. There's a pipe out. And there you go. You have a lot of access to space. That thing took up a lot of space. Now really that I think did. about it. Um, I don't recommend that you get an air intake for the Miata if you're not boosted or anything. Just because the factory intake is probably the best intake that was ever made. Which sounds weird because you think performance is better, but it's not always the case. So this is the housing for the uh, uh, for the thermostat. So it's good that it's up here because we can just change the thermostat right here. And I know some people have had problems before where this housing breaks. So we're gonna be really careful taking it out and everything. You know, I don't want it to break, obviously. And um, yeah, this hose is already removed. And if you see here, what we discovered. <laughs> is that the radiator is actually cracking from the corner here so this is actually pretty bad as well good thing we have a new radiator you know what i mean yeah there you go so if you see in there there's like buildup of coolant and stuff like that that's actually not good obviously so we're gonna pressure wash that out of course the ideal solution would to would be to get a new hose but um doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look that bad, and if we were to get new hoses, I would recommend silicone hoses. So put that on your list to order as well. Silicone hoses. Alrighty, so now that that's out, and we undid this part, 
we're gonna remove any electrical lines that are on the radiator undo it from here as well that was that was easy that was too easy that's no, a good. That's concerning. Okay. <laughs> and there should be another one here for this fan. I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. Uh, this one looks like it has a stronger connection. Alrighty. So that's that. That's not gonna come out like that. Alrighty. Um, so I'm going to remove the thermostat first, just so we can get to this. So uh, then you're going to need some 12s for the housing. And then, so this is the part where you need to be really careful. <laughs> this is a, a, a rubber mallet, so it's not too, too aggressive. And there you go. So I don't know if this is normal, but it's a little warm. Oh, the thermostat just fell off. Yeah, it just fell off. <laughs> but it has a stud. It, I, I don't know. I guess comment down below. I guess I can look it up on the internet to see if that's normal. But to me, that's not normal. I don't normally see studs. Mm, but it looks like it was whatever. intact on there. All right, so here's the radiator. It looks like complete ass. Whoa. That shit looks ripped. Yeah, it looks bad. I guess we got to try to find the bolts where it bolts onto. Um, so here's mm. one for sure here. Uh, what size is it? Is it a 12? It is a 12. Oh, it is 12. And this radiator is loose for sure. It is? Yeah, it's, it's super loose. I, have, I had like no pressure when I took that out. There's another one on this side for sure. Right here at the top. So it has some rubber grommets on it that you're gonna have to transfer to the new radiator. So just keep that in mind. Uh, then it looks like it just lifts out. And we're, again, we're lifting everything with the, with the fans and everything. So you wanna be super careful not to damage the fans, but it's caught up on something. Yeah, it looks like there's a bracket on there uh, for the hoses. So we gotta take that out as well because, um, because of reasons. Um, I can't really see too much, but it looks like it's a 10 that's holding the bracket on. Alrighty, so I don't know. I don't think you can really see just because it's not focusing that well for whatever reason, but uh, we went ahead and removed the screw that was like the 10 millimeter that was down there. So it looks like it's a lot looser now. I'm gonna see if we can take it out. It was just a nug. Just a bit of finessing. <laughs> it's a bit of fucking nug. A bit of fucking finessing. And there we go. We got the... We got it out. Nice. So there's the fans, the stock radiator, cracked radiator, broken radiator. And... Look at all the room, bro. Fuck. That looks oh nice. God. And like you can see where it's leaking more right here. Yeah, like that's where I was showing you. Yeah, dude. It's really, really gunked up right here. So that's gonna be something we tackle on next time. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So um, so yeah. So for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pressure wash the um, thing here, the thermostat housing, just to make sure that it's clean. We'll also pressure wash around here. I'm gonna see if I still have some degrease here. If I do, then we'll just spray it down and and uh, and shoot it with some some of that. Uh, being careful not to hit the math or the uh, the thing. We'll actually get some trash bags to cover this up. Then. I'm gonna remove the lines to the heater core. Ooh, a little hot. I'm gonna remove the lines to the heater core and just pressure wash it out as well. So, 
So yeah, I'm gonna go get some trash bags, cover those up, and then I'll be back pressure washing those out. So, so we cleaned out, uh, we, we flushed a bit of it out. And if, if you can see here, like the pressure washer was strong enough to like try to take some of this out. Um, I can still see that it's like still like orangish, but I mean, that's years of oxidation and stuff like that. So um, to be honest, it's truly almost never gonna come out um, unless you're like power blasting it out. And um, you know, unfortunately we don't have the resources to do that. So that's as good as we can get it. As long as the water comes out clear from the from the bottom hose, I think you're fine. And uh, we also pressure washed out that part, so it looks a lot less oh, hell yeah. um, oily. So now we can oh, kind of see if like there's oil leaks or anything like that. We'll be able to tell you know where it's coming from. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and take out the the radiator, the um, what's it called, the heater hoses and just do the heater hoses real quick as well. So again, what I'm gonna do is uh, stick the pressure washer in here and watch the water come out of there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and yes, I'm using a uh, torque gun. Hate me in the comments. I'm not gonna sit there and go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, screw that. So there's one. There's two. Oh, that looks nasty. So this looks gross. Oh. And you can tell it was leaking and then just coming down all through here oh and it's just God. rusty and it's old and it's cracked but the whole point of this video Ooh. <laughs> we're throwing in this baby Ooh. right here Ooh. one of the key differences here is that it's prettier obviously uh man's not hot uh, it's disgusting. uh one thing that you want to note here it's almost the same size. Um, it looks thinner, this one. But this is this one's thinner. Mm. And you can kind of tell because if you look here, this is not as deep in as like this. You see? Mm -hmm. Like here? It's got this steep in, and that doesn't. It. It's not as steep. So other than that, it looks almost exactly the same size. The, the positioning is still the same. Like this is uh, crooked that way. That's kind of crooked that way. We need to move some of this stuff. Like this pin needs to go on here. And then this rubber grommet needs to go on here. And uh, uh, we don't need to move this because we don't have clips on here. They have already made provisions for that. Uh, so yeah, it looks solid. And the drain is actually at the bottom for this one. So it's not like you know, all the way. Uh, I don't even know where the drain is. Oh, the drain is on the bottom of this one too. Well, I drained it wrong then. <laughs> oh, but it's all messed up. Yeah. Yeah, it's really messed it's up. Fucked. So yeah. Um, now what I noticed on this one, I think did, when you ordered your radiator, did it ask if you had an auto or a manual? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I think with the other one, this is just the stock like aftermarket one because it has the things for a transmission oil cooler. Um, I don't personally trust these because you know it could happen where it cracks inside and then it gets in here and then it messes up transmissions, which happens a lot on Xterras. Um, so I don't trust that. So it's good that this didn't even come with that anyway, but make sure to order the right radiator. Anyway. Cool. So we got ugly fans attached to a really pretty radiator. I know. <laughs> um, there's a clip that holds them. It's called an E-clip. These clips are so annoying. I freaking hate these clips. 
So the way you take them off, uh, from what I know, is you grab a screwdriver and then you pop them out. Um, that's the only way I'd really know. So yeah, you put it in and then you just kind of just like that. And then it just slides up. Oh, nice. So this is also some type of rubber grommet as well. Um, I'm not gonna silicone these, but yeah. So these go on this side, it looks like. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put them in as, as I do to, like so. Yeah, so this one's gonna go in here. And that's why they're annoying. All right, and then I'm just gonna push this in. Grab me the flat. Okay, and the way I'm gonna put this in, I guess, is the wrong way. Just move down. Yeah. So I'll just. It's annoying. Why don't you clamp them there? It was hard getting it out. Let's see how easy it is to put it in. Exactly. Put this right here. Yeah, that. Go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess. That was easy. That was hella easy. Yeah, that was way easier to put in. So, that's it. Okay. And we're done with the video. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. <laughs> <laughs> Please subscribe. Look at this. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's that. Oh, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't see you there. Oh, welcome to Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Alrighty, so if you see, we already got the um, the whole radiator um, plugged up and, and, and screwed in and everything. So, I'm going to be honest with you, this thing looks super sick in here. Um, the insulation was easy backwards. Uh, it's really self-explanatory literally exactly what we did but backwards so we're going to go ahead and fill it up with coolant i'm kind of thinking now we should have got the 50 50 premix but this is fine because it shouldn't last longer so i'm going to fill up the reservoir first clean uh, and we're using the green coolant because that's what it calls for you missed so bad mm, kind of so i'm going to fill it halfway up and then the other half will we'll fill it up with water and this one we're going to fill it up all the way with water we'll fill it up like halfway through the jug And generally, you want to use uh, distilled water, you know, like from like the grocery store or whatever. Um, we don't have distilled water, which is fine. Um, I'm just, we're just going to use garden hose water. We're doing the right thing, and this may not seem like the right thing, but don't worry, it's going to work. It's fine. You guys, there's contaminants in it, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. It's going to work. It's going to work better than what was in there before, trust me. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and fill it up with water. Uh, do you want to push it back? Yeah. Yeah, let's push it back. Might as well. Okay. 
I feel like this probably holds a lot more than the stock. I, that's what I'm thinking too, because it would have stopped by now. Especially because you already put coolant in there already, you would think. Mm -hmm. All right, so the way they want to bleed the coolant is you want to have the car at the highest spot. Um, and uh, the way we're going to do that actually is we're, we're going to use a funnel to put it in here and then just fill it up all the way to the top and then you know now usually you want to have a different funnel that that's like specialized for this but no big deal. turn on the car uh we're going to turn on the car we're going to do it the old school way and we'll just watch it bubble out you know what you want to try not nah, just off the Turn the heat all the way to the highest. And uh, the, the level went down, but it's gonna go down more uh, once the um, once the air is coming out. So we just wanna make sure that we're filling it up while it comes back up too. So I'm gonna fill it up with water all the way to the top now. So uh, now that we're bleeding that and everything, um, we're just going to let that bleed and everything and uh, that should be the end of the video, uh, just bleeding the car, I don't think anybody wants to see that. Now um, if you guys have any other questions, go ahead and comment down below uh, if I did anything wrong you think, go ahead and comment down below, share this video if you think it helped and we'll see. Oh yeah, and then uh, one more thing we forgot. Go ahead. I got him a, a sick uh, HKS special ed uh, limited edition, I should say, radiator cap. Oh my god, that thing is sick. It just completes it. I mean, it goes with it. Okay. Again, because Koyo Rad didn't supply a radiator mm -hmm. cap. Thanks, Koyo Rad. But I guess it kind of matches with the red valve cover that he already has. So, man, that looks good. Alrighty, so now it's the end. So we'll see you on the next one. Peace out.